Terrell Thomas, These Urban Times. I'm sitting down with a gentleman whose music we have been listening to for years. Yeah. I, I remember a, a good days in high school, man. You were providing the sweet man. tunes that had the ladies going wild, and you're yep. still doing that. It's been great to see the longevity in your career. Uh, sitting down today with singer, songwriter, actor, overall entertainer. Mario, how you feel today, sir? I'm blessed, bro. I'm blessed, man. You know, it's been a long ride. It's been a, it's been a bumpy road. It's been blessings. It's been everything. You know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's the beauty of, of being an artist and taking that music, taking life and transmitting it through the music. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a blessing. I think about artists from back in the day, like Marvin Gaye and like, Artists who ain't have the opportunities that we had, you know, as black artists. And I always remind myself how blessed I am to be doing it during this time. You feel me? Because we control our music, we control our masters now. It's like it's a whole different world. You feel me? So when you talk about like doing it that long, it's like I've been doing it long, but you know, it's a lot of people who paved the way for us to even do what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So it's a blessing. Very, that's very true. Very true. So I, I want to lead off and kind of talk to you about that. Your virtual concert series that you've been putting out. Uh, you you put yeah. you one on Valentine's Day, very very dope, and you got something coming up again this weekend or coming up on April the tenth. Um, can you can you explain to our audience a little bit what you got cooking up and what's going to take place on April the tenth? Yeah, so April tenth is inertia. Um, that's the name of my 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 virtual show. This next one, I always come up with concepts for my virtual shows because I feel like I want people to to learn what it is about, you know, like learn my, my psyche, how I think, you know what I'm saying, outside of just being a singer, like inertia represents that focusness. It represents that like, that um, consistency until you're ready or until something shifts you to go to the next level in your life, in your journey, whatever. So that's what the word represents to me. And so I kind of just named the show inertia because of that. Uh, so that's April 10th. Um, it's more personal than the first one. The first one, like I had dancers, I had like a big crew. It was like a, you know, a lot going on behind the scenes, different sets, but this one is just literally like me, the mic and the songs that you love, you know what I'm saying? And just me in a space, a void, just performing and singing to you, you know what I'm saying? So make sure y'all get your tickets. It's April 10th, Inertia. You can go to the link in my bio, at Mario Worldwide on Instagram and uh, get your tickets there. Or you can go to mandolin.com uh, and get it as well. Could you also speak to me about your most recent project, Closer to Mars? Uh, I know that you, you had plans of dropping it before um, kind of the protests and uh, the unfortunate murder of George Floyd and things that took place, the, the pandemic that, that broke off, the difficult year in which 2020 was. I know you had plans on dropping it before those events took place. Uh, you yeah. kind, of, kind of waited, uh, went back in the lab, rewrote some things, got some things off your chest. Talk to me about that project and why it was important for you to kind of get back in the lab and recreate some of the some of the some of the songs and some of the some of those feelings and vibes uh, and what you were looking to create. Um, I mean, you know, it was definitely started before the whole shit happened, and I was already kind of like on my summer vibes. You know what I'm saying? I was like, right, I'm gonna do like a couple of R&B joints on there, but I really wanted to be a nice spring summer album. I mean, Project EP. And when that happened, I held back and I was like, all right, well, maybe it's gonna last for two months. And then I put it out afterwards. Man, three, four months go by. I'm just like, look, this shit is getting out of hand. You know, I, I don't wanna wait to put, put it out. So um, yeah, I definitely recorded a lot more music than I released on there, which I have coming out soon, like more projects, more music. But it was just kind of like my way of saying, getting closer to me, you know? My name means Mars in Latin. A lot of my fans don't know that. A lot of people don't know that Mario actually means Mars in Latin. And Mars represents vitality. It represents action, um, taking control of your life in every way, shape, or form. You know, so closer to Mars just represents that. You know, it represents that. And I feel like with where we were when the project came out 15 days prior to that, our planet had, had been the closest to Mars than it's been in over like 40 years. So it was just a lot of things that were kind of aligning with the project. Um, I'm very, I'm a mystic, so I'm into, everything has to make sense for me from a number standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, from an alignment standpoint. I don't just do things just to do them, you know? So that's kind of what the vibe of it was, but you know, it's just good R&B. Um, I had a lot of fun. The video from Mars and Pretty Mouth Magic is out right now. And yeah, we just had fun with it.
can you talk to me about the growth and what you've had in your career? Um, one thing that I respect about you a whole, whole lot is your ability to write timeless music. Um, Thank one, you. One, one of your, I guess I would say one of your most popular singles, uh, Let Me Love You is a song that you can still hear played today. <laughs> right. As, as, you're riding, as you're riding in your car, you might hear it on one of the uh, slow jam sets or something like that. You'll hear it in, at barbecues and things as we get closer, closer into warm weather. Um, so could yeah. you tell me about, about the growth and what you've seen in yourself uh, from a writing standpoint uh, and, and and all of the music and what you've put out? Yeah, man. I mean... I was, I was, you know, 18 years old singing, you know, love songs that I ain't know shit about. You know, I didn't know nothing about loving somebody at 18 years old. I didn't really, when I thought I was in love, but you know, it was puppy love, you know what I'm saying? So I would say just over the years, as I experienced life, all my songs from Let Me Love You to How Do I Breathe, Crying Out For Me, I Choose You, How Could You, like all those songs started to become more real to me as I got older and started experiencing love and experiencing, you know, messing up and getting in relation, like getting out. So it just became a real thing. Like I even performed them differently because I could relate to the music. So I would say that I grew with my music. I grew with the music that we all love and, and that I was seeing, right? And then I was like, I want to start writing my own music. So a lot of the songs you hear now are me writing, like the lyrics are me, the videos are me. When I first came out, I was just taking direction from, you know, the label and just doing what, I need to do, you know what I'm saying, to put music out. Now it's like I'm hand, all hands on deck, you know, and I think that you can hear the difference and see the difference in my visuals and in my performances and just overall. I'm originally from Philadelphia. I know you're really originally from Baltimore. When you when you hear family in Philly though. Matter of fact, speaking of Philly, I want to shout out to my cousin, Kristen De Marino, my cousin Deja, just her line. She in Philly right now. That's you know what I'm saying. She just sent this fit to me. Like you feel me? It's lit. She in Philly. Make sure y'all check her out. Christian De Moreno. Shout uh, out to oh, That's where yeah. are. Yeah. Being from Baltimore, when did you fall in love with music? When did you decide that mm. R&B was a path in which you wanted to take? So, you know, you become a product of the environment, right? So my mother played a lot of R&B. Like she was ready to go when it came to like making sure I had the best music around me and the, and the, and the best textures. And, and, you know, from Stevie Wonder, the voice of man, Joe, you know, uh, Usher, like, you know what I mean? When he first came out, like just all the good music, all the good R&B, you know what I'm saying? And she also played a lot of hip hop. So my mother was like that girl next door who just like loved good music, you know what I'm saying? So I grew up around the best of my grandmother. I'm going to church with her every Sunday. So I'm singing in church too. So it's just like, I'm getting all of this information, you know what I mean? She's also playing Marvin Gaye, Matt King Cole, Stevie Wonder, Osley Brothers, like, you know what I'm saying? So I just grew up around incredible music. And then my um, my father, who I didn't grow up with, but I think I got my gifts from him and my ear from my mother because my father sang in the gospel group. So okay. it was just like, you know, inherited, but also I had a lot of information around me. Very well said. How has your style changed as far as writing music as an adult? As you mentioned a moment ago, you you grew with your music, or yeah, uh, you became a man as you know as your career was taking off. So how has that changed as far as your creative process? So my creative process is just life. You know, I I create all the time. I'm always recording music. You know, every song is not meant to be heard by the public, but like. I'm always practicing how to translate my feelings and my emotions on music. Like, how do I be my most vulnerable? Um, I still think I haven't mastered it yet. You know, I think I think there's so much for me to learn and so much for me to uh, express through the music, you know, channel. And it's a practice art. You know, you gotta practice every day. You gotta be vulnerable. You gotta be in the right space to even record. When you're a singer, um, I mean, when you're an artist in general, you gotta be in the right space to transmute those feelings and, and those thoughts, you know, and then there's so many thoughts you have all the time. So it's like, which part of yourself do you want to put in the music and share, you know? So I think those things just come with practice and they come with how, how are you, how able, how honest are you able to be with yourself through the music? You know, so it can also be therapeutic. I, I know for me at times, music has been very therapeutic, you know what I'm saying? And I know a lot of people use that as a way to also um, tell their story. So in R&B, I would say that um, 
there's a lot of stories that I haven't told about my life that I want to get to one day. And I would love it to have like the same type of connection and the success that my mainstream R&B music has had, you know what I'm saying? But telling my story in a way that, you know, when Marvin put out Mercy, Mercy Me and, and, and What's Going On, all that, that was after he put out all his mainstream love songs. I mean, he wanted to make something that was like, what's the world, what's happening in the world right now? You know what I'm saying? We think about somebody like D'Angelo, he'd go and do a, how does it feel, right? And then he'd go and do a, put a slice of a devil's pie. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's that for me. It's like, I'm finding that space where I'm able to talk about real shit that people go through every day, thoughts they have, battles they have spiritually, whatever, whatever, you know, street, sh whatever it is, because I hear all these stories because of where I come from, but I'm known for singing love songs. Like, you know what I'm saying? So making that transition is where I'm kind of at right now, like where I can just do music that just, whatever I feel versus every time Mario singing gotta be a love song, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. Very well said. What do you want your fans to take from your upcoming concert? April 10th is right around the corner. Yeah, man. At the, the um, is building. So what do you want them to take from it? Yeah, for sure. April 10th, inertia. I think the thing I want people to take most is that I'm here to stay. You know what I'm saying? I'm here to stay. Um, I'm still, I, I want to take them on a, a nostalgic ride because I'm performing records all the way back from my first album. You feel me? So it's really about me giving my fans that treat you know, of, of nostalgia and taking them to a place that maybe they haven't been in a minute. You know, there's not a lot of R&B out as far as from males, male, from a male standpoint, you feel me? So, you know, I think it's really just reminding them, the ones who pay for the show, the ones who come to the show, like reminding them that I'm here to stay and that I'm doing this for you and I couldn't do it without you. So just that connection, man, that connection. And Mario is a multiverse, multi versatile artist. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, bro, I love this shit. Real time is these urban times once again sitting down with Mario. Before I let you go, I want to mm. know what's going on. Do you have anything coming up in the world of film, in the world of Hollywood? Of course, we've seen you on Empire. Uh, yeah, you thing yeah. On Brent. You've been you've been in in, in several yeah. shows over the past few years. Do you have anything that's in the works currently? Well, I'm right now working on a project that I'm writing myself. Uh, a couple of projects that I'm really passionate about. Um, but you know, it those types of things kind of like happen when you least expect it those types of roles I'm always going to auditions always doing that but you know when you when those things happen it's like they don't always happen and you don't know like two months from now I can get a, a, the biggest role in my life you know what I'm saying just like that. it's hard for me to say what's coming up because I don't know if I got the roles that I auditioned for last week <laughs> like you know what I'm saying but if I do you be the first to know big dog <laughs> I, I, I respect that you know what I'm saying but yeah I'm, I'm working man you know we're working do you have a favorite record off of Closer to Mars or something that, that just sticks with you? Something that when you were creating means means a whole lot to you? Yeah, man, I would say Mars. You know, like I said, my name means Mars in Latin. And uh, the song is really, I'm telling the girl, like, be careful if you love me because I'm not who you think I am. Like, it's a lot deeper than what you think it is. And I might take you somewhere that you've never been before. So that song, I would say, is probably the most introspective. But anything else is really about having fun. Crowns and Diamonds, I feel like, any man who, who loves a woman like can play that for his girl when he when he chilling. Like I actually had a couple get married, get engaged at an event I did when I first put that project out to that song. They were playing a song, so it was like you know it's it's just like you know special moments like that. Um, but yeah, I would say Mars is the, the most special to me. Mario, I appreciate your time today, good sir. I damn sure yes, appreciate sir. You sitting down and speaking you with you. Know. We'll be looking. We'll, we will be tuned in. Me and my wife will be tuned in. Thank uh, you, man. On the 10th and enjoying the concert. So uh, give us all you got, man. You said you, you're going to take us on a long ride through your, through your catalog. We'll be looking forward to that, man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. All love. love. Stay safe. Yes, sir.